How long could the building last? When we start to think about this, several symbolic buildings may come into our minds. We start to think about the pyramids of Giza, the Pantheon in Rome, some old cathedrals, etc., etc., etc. So the answer will be that buildings could last for a pretty long time. The reality is that most of our buildings do not last for so long. Residential buildings usually last for more than 50 years. A typical office building lasts somewhere between 30 to 50 years, and retail structures last around 20 years. These structures that I've just mentioned are built from more or less the same materials, so we see that this is not the question of the durability of the materials. The simple answer to my original question is that the building can last only as long as its value is higher than the value of the land on which it was built. For example, this building here was the Gillander Building in New York City. It was built in 1897 and was deconstructed only 13 years later in 1910. It wasn't profitable enough. Buildings are usually demolished within 20, 30, 50 years by humans and are not destroyed by environmental effects or natural disasters or anything else. So is this a problem? If you ask the architect who designed it, probably it is. But buildings can become obsolete very quickly. They may no longer satisfy the market demand. Is there enough parking spot? Is there enough open space? Is the ceiling high enough? Is it possible to refurbish the building to satisfy the new requirements? And so on. So what goes up must come down. This is quite natural. New buildings come and old buildings go every day. There is nothing wrong with it. The problem is how we do it. In 1910, the Gillander building was still properly deconstructed. This was an inverse form of the construction, from the top to the bottom. The beams, the windows were saved and resold. The bricks were cleaned and then also resold to be used in other structures. There were people who could clean 5,000 bricks per day. Laborious, yes, but wasteful, no. It was an elegant way to take a building down. But then something changed. This is the Hotel Majestic. It was built in 1894 in the Central Park, New York City, and it cost $2 million at that time. However, in 1930, the decision was made that the hotel needed to be replaced by a much larger one, and the old building needed to be demolished as fast as possible. As a result, none of the materials used in the hotel were salvaged. The rosewood, mahogany, and black walnut woodworks, which represent the most luxurious timber materials, were sold as badly splintered firewood. The bathtubs and other interior elements were dumped into the sea. The bricks were used to fill up the swamps of Long Island. This happened in 1930. The question is, how we deal with our undesired buildings today? Jackhammer, wrecking ball, and dynamite. Is it fast? Yes, it is. What is the issue with these methods? The issue is the amount of waste we produce. Around 50% of all waste we produce globally is coming from construction and demolition. The construction industry is also responsible for 11% of the global carbon emissions. The steel and the cement industries together produce almost as much carbon dioxide as all the trucks and cars in the world. So what can we do? The first solution would be to avoid building anything, but obviously this is not an option. The second solution is to apply the principles of the circular economy. This means that we could reuse our building components as we did in the past, if we wouldn't damage them during demolition. In fact, the demolition process should be replaced by a deconstruction process, an inverse form of construction. Of course, we can also recycle the materials, which is already a good thing, but for example, for steel, it means that we melt the steel and use it as a base material in the steel production. This requires a large amount of energy and it also contributes to the carbon emissions. And concrete recycling today means downcycling. The new concrete that we produce will have a lower quality than the old one. So in short, recycling is good, but not good enough. Reuse has many more advantages. So why don't we do that? Because currently, we build our buildings as if they would stand forever. We know that the buildings won't last forever, 
but almost no one thinks about the deconstruction when the buildings are designed. The building components are usually firmly bonded together, so our structures are not easily demountable. For instance, in the past, the mortar applied between the bricks was much weaker than the bricks, so it could be removed easily. Now we use mortars, which are much stronger than the bricks themselves, so we cannot clean the bricks so easily anymore without damaging them. There is a form of construction that is really efficient and widely applied today, the composite construction. It means that we combine structural steel with concrete in such a way that we use the materials where they are most efficient. Steel members are efficient in tension and concrete members are efficient in compression. So we put the steel beams to those places where primarily tension forces arise and we put the concrete elements to those places where mostly compression forces are present. The connection between the steel and the concrete is usually provided by the so-called shear studs. These are elements which are welded to the steel beam and fully encased in concrete. This way, the steel and the concrete carry the loads together. So as I said, this is a really efficient construction. These are lightweight structures, very cost efficient and they are fast to build. However, when the building's lifetime is over, it is really difficult to separate the steel from the concrete we usually have no other choice than demolition. And the demolition requires an extensive amount of cutting, which is a labor and cost intensive work. Meanwhile, we damage our materials and it is not possible to reuse them anymore. In the past four years, we at the ArcelorMittal Chair of Steel Construction of the University of Luxembourg were working on these issues in the frame of an international research project founded by the European Commission. We had several project partners from other universities and from the industry as well. We developed a modular system from steel and concrete, which can maintain the benefits of composite construction and it is fully demountable, reusable and interchangeable. This means that the same building components, beams and columns, can be used and reused in different buildings, for example in car parks or in office buildings. The system is based on the concept of kit of parts. What is a kit of parts system? I am quite sure we are all familiar with this. This is the Lego system, which is indeed a kit of parts system. We can build unique buildings from standardized elements. The structures built from Lego usually have a relatively short lifetime, but the components from which they were built can be used and reused again and again. This is exactly what we would like to achieve with our building components. Buildings may come and go, but the steel and the concrete building components could be used and reused again and again. For this, we need to use demountable connections, dry joints, modular design and prefabrication. This is totally possible with the current construction technology. What we can see in this short video is a small mock-up of the building kit that we developed. These would be the columns in a building. Then comes the beam, which could be much longer than this, for example, 60 meters. It is connected to the columns. Then, when the building is deconstructed, the same beam can be reused in another building when it is connected to other beams. Then, we position the slab elements, which represent the floor on which we are standing. So, this is one example of a reusable building kit. Demountable buildings have already been built many times. For example, this is the Crystal Palace, which was originally built in Hyde Park, London, to house the Great Exhibition of 1851. This was an impressive structure with a length of 564 meters and an exhibition area of 92,000 square meters. It was three times larger than the largest cathedral of London, the St. Paul's Cathedral. And it was completely demountable. After the exhibition took place, the palace was deconstructed, relocated and re-erected with some modifications in South London and it stood there until its unfortunate destruction by fire in 1936. These buildings also demonstrate that it is possible to build structures that are fully demountable. On the left hand side you can see a demountable courthouse in Amsterdam and on the right hand side a demountable car park in Leiden. What I would like to emphasize here is that we are able to build demountable structures when we know that the structure is temporary. We just neglect to realize that from a certain point of view all buildings are temporary. 
Building for the future doesn't mean that we make buildings for eternity. It means that we enable the future generations to decide whether they would like to keep the building or deconstruct it, relocate them if they wish, or reuse the building components for new structures. Clever design today saves carbon dioxide and produces less waste in the future. Music